Greetings everyone, this is a video to demonstrate the 2015 release of the WSF Williams System FPGA board. Now there's a few differences between this board and the previous releases. The most noticeable is there is now a USB socket on the board. This is used for loading the game ROM images and storing them on the internal memory. So game ROMs are loaded through a USB flash drive and are stored on the internal uh, serial flash that's on the board. Once they're loaded, you can remove the uh, USB stick and the game will actually run the ROM images from the internal memory. Uh, other than that, most of the board remains the same. There's a 6809 CPU. This is actually a Tachi one. Uh, there's a Xilinx uh, FPGA, which replicates the original TTL hardware. The uh, video board, the ROM board, the I.O., that's all handled by the FPGA. Uh, there's also a microcontroller on here which handles talking to the USB drive and uh, writing the uh, memory. Uh, it also emulates the uh, soundboard. Uh, there's still a VGA header so you can set VGA mode or standard mode. There's an external uh, video sync header. There is a I.O. header for the buttons, player 6 buttons which are needed for Stargate, also Coin 3 and high score reset. There's a 49-way joystick connector, so Sinistar and Blaster can use a 49-way joystick. And the other side here is for an external soundboard. So you might want to use an external soundboard if you want to run Blaster in stereo or support the uh, second soundboard for the very rare uh, Sinistar cockpit. Okay, so onto the actual board. And let's point this at the screen. and power it up. It runs through its cell test and this is a beta release so check why you get the B's in the version numbers and here we see this one has everything loaded already but um, let's go with the games that are added. So we have Blaster Kit version. Uh, the Blaster Kit version is was designed for a single speaker, single sound board uh, whereas this version of Blaster was designed for actual stereo sound. Playing it on this board won't give you stereo sound. Um, all sound triggers are played by the mono, or mono audio channel. Uh, but if you ran an external sound board, you could have blaster and stereo. Anyway, uh, Joust Red. Uh, this was the version of Joust that had the pterodactyl bug. Uh, a, a number of people have requested support for that, so that was added. Uh, also, Robotron Tie-Dye Edition. This is the special edition of Robotron. And Defender Green Rom. Uh, green ROM is another ROM revision. It's functionally the same as the blue ROM. So we have uh, three versions of Defender, uh, the Joust Red, Blaster Kit, and Robotron Tie-Dye. So uh, there's also a few changes in the system setup menu. We have uh, VGA scan lines is now an option. So I don't know how well that comes out on the video, but VGA scan lines, what that does is it blanks every other line on the screen. So it makes a VGA mode, instead of looking very clean and, and solid, it makes it look a little bit like a standard resolution display where there's a blank line between each video line. Uh, the other option here is setup menu on boot. If you turn off the setup menu, uh, there are two ways to get back into setup. Uh, the first one is you hold down the service switch and power the machine on. The second one is you hold down one player and two player buttons and power the machine on. This lets you turn off the one player and two player buttons when you power it on. So you can either set service, so service mode will always, holding down service mode and powering the machine on will always get you into a setup menu. Or holding down one player and two player start and powering the machine up can get you into the service menu. So that's... That's just an option if you want to turn that on or off. Default is off. So let's turn the VGA scan lines off. Um, set option settings. Uh, additional option settings. Uh, we have high score reset uh, button. Now, in Defender, you need the high score reset button to change uh, options when you're in Defender's setup mode. Now, uh, this saves you having to add or wire the high score button up because you can set the high score reset button to also be triggered by player one button one. So when player one presses presses the button, it also triggers the high score reset button. So this just makes it a little bit easier to set up Defender if you have a jammer 
cabinet or a cabinet that had been rewired to jammer. Just means you have to have one less connector. Uh, next thing is uh, blaster external sound. Uh, you can run blaster with an external soundboard in if you want the full stereo effect. So if you're running it, if you built a, your own uh, blaster dedicated cabinet, you'd need two soundboards for the left and right speaker. What this does is it lets you, if I turn it on, it lets you run an external soundboard. So uh, the right audio or the right board is goes output goes through the header. The left uh, soundboard is emulated by the microcontroller on the board. It still doesn't stop you running two, you could run two external soundboards with Blaster if you really wanted and have the, the stereo effect that way. Uh, this just basically means what happens is if you turn it off, all sounds are, all Blaster sounds are played by the internal soundboard, but you don't get stereo. Uh, Robotron bug fix. The Robotron bug fix, now, there was a bug with Robotron that basically if you shot an enforcer in one of the corners, the explosion effect uh, would overwrite, or potentially overwrite um, memory and could cause the game to actually crash. Now there was a bug fix made for this that stopped the explosion from corrupting memory. Now this applies the bug fix to the game ROMs uh, when they're actually loaded. So you can choose to turn that on or off. Uh, you really, you'd pretty much want to keep it on because otherwise, you know, you run the risk of the game crashing, which would, would make the Robotron even more challenging. Okay, right, so back to the menu. Uh, load game ROMs. Now, this is where game ROM images are loaded. And I dropped the memory stick on the floor, so I have to go find it now. Ah, oh, here it is. Okay, right. so I'm going to plug in the memory stick. And there it is, plugged into the USB slot. And let's go and pick, let's just load Robotron. You can always reload games multiple times, it doesn't actually, uh, it doesn't make any difference, except when you load a game, it defaults the uh, NV, the non-volatile RAM. It's, uh, the non-volatile RAM is, is reset back to the defaults. So if you load a game, it will set the NV RAM to basically what it would be like if you, you uh, reset completely reset the game back to, to factory. So as you see, it goes through, looks for the file names, loads them in, stores them on the internal memory, and it says loaded. There's two other options here. One is the load WSF all.bin. What that does is um, it looks for a single file that is all the ROM files concatenated together and loads them in a single go. And there's also erase. Now that will blank all of system memory and return this board to a completely blank, fresh, uh, new state. Okay, so let's exit this. Now game enable. Uh, this is the same as um, the, previous, the previous versions where you can actually turn on and off which games you want to appear on the menu. But there now is an enhancement. Uh, there you can actually have two sets of settings. So let's go, to, let's go down to Robotron and let's set that to two CMOS. What that means is you now have two complete sets of settings that are independent of each other. And oops, let's go back to Robotron here. And now when you select Robotron, it actually asks you which set of settings you want to play with. So what you can do is you can set one up to completely standard default uh, uh, default settings and the other set the other set of settings CMOS 2 you could set to like championship edition you know the, the completely the hardest settings for everything so that's uh, that's an option now you can you can either turn that on and off if you don't if you turn it off and let's go and show that game enable Robotron 1 CMOS it will just automatically start the game so there we go and our fast boots turned on if you notice. And let's quit back to the menu. Uh, other things under the setup menu, uh, we have uh, switch test, so just make sure all your switches work. Uh, display test, so you can help set up your monitor. Uh, that just loops through the colors as well, so you can make sure your colors there. And that's the, the total uh, maximum size of the screen that you see there. Let's go back. Uh, system update. Uh, system update allows you to update the boot menu, which is you know, what we're seeing here. 
uh, update the FPGA, uh, update the microcontroller, and load any patch files that are needed. So if I do any updates to the boot menu or the FPGA or any of the things, uh, this would be the menu to uh, go into. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, anyway, that about sums it up. I don't think there's any other features I need to go over here. Um, you can see there's the game, the master game list. And uh, that wraps it up. Thanks for watching.